So we have a 20 kg block uh, that is placed on a rough surface inclined at 30 degrees uh, to the horizontal and then we have a constant force F acting parallel to the surface uh, that is applied on the block uh, so that the block moves up the incline at a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. So we have V uh, equals to 2 meters per second and then we have our acceleration that is equal to 0 meters per second squared because it it is moving at a constant velocity and then uh, it is said that uh, the constant kinetic frictional force so we have uh, friction uh, that is equals to 18 newtons x on the block and then um 2.1 says uh, state newtons first flow in words uh, we know that a body will remain in a state of rest or motion at constant velocity unless a non-zero resultant force acts on it and then 2.2 says uh, draw a level free body diagram for the block so i'm just gonna go ahead and do that so uh, that's our block and then we are told that there's a f that is applied on the block right and then since it is resting on a surface uh, we have a normal force so this is our normal force this is our f applied and then we always have weight right regardless of anything else and then uh, we are also told that we have a frictional force that is opposing the motion at 18 newtons so there we have our frictional force so that's it for the free body diagram we can move ahead and do 2.3 and then 2.3 says uh, calculate the magnitude of force f in question 2 more often than not when we answer in an equation we'll start by saying f net equals to ma almost all the time and then um what is f net f net is what we have on the free body diagram right so what we have is uh, f applied plus all the other opposing forces what are the opposing forces first is friction right because friction is always opposite the direction of the motion and then the other force we have is fg parallel right uh, which is equals to ma what is ma we know that m is 20 and then we have deduced that the acceleration is zero because it is moving at constant speed so we're gonna have f applied uh, plus and then we know that our frictional force is 18 newtons so we're gonna have minus 18 uh, because it's opposing the motion and then uh fg uh, parallel and uh, that will be the mass um multiplied by gravity so that will be 20 multiplied by minus uh, 9,8 and then sine of the angle because parallel on a inclined surface it is sine and then perpendicular uh, will be cos and then on a flat surface it is vice versa so we're gonna have uh, the f applied equals to i'm taking 18 to the other side so i'm gonna have 18 uh, plus 20 uh, multiplied by 9,8 uh, multiplied by sine 30 degrees so if i put that on my calculator i'm gonna get um i'm getting 18 uh, plus 20 multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by sine of 30 degrees uh, which is giving me 116 uh, newtons uh, if you're new to the channel uh, please like the video and consider subscribing and um, for 2.4, there's some statement there that says force F is removed when the block reaches point X. So now we only have the friction and the FG parallel. Uh, the block continues to move up the surface and comes to rest uh, momentarily at point Y uh, before it starts sliding down, right? 
Assume that the kinetic frictional force acting on the block remains at 18 Newton as it moves from point X to point Y. Write down the net force acting on the block as it moves from point X uh, to point Y. So at point X, uh, we know that uh, F net um, equals to MA, but then now it is no longer uh, moving at a constant velocity. So we cannot use uh, mass and acceleration uh, to find uh, the resultant force. But uh, we can use uh, the components of the force system itself, right? So we can have F net, uh, which is equal to uh, frictional force uh, plus Fg parallel, right? Because the question says F net, and then these are the only forces that are still acting. Uh, what is this equals to? This is equals to uh, minus 18 uh, plus 20 multiplied by 9,8 minus 9,8 uh, multiplied by sine 30 degrees, which we know that it is equals to 116 newtons uh, from 2.3, right? Hence, that's why the question says, write down the net force it doesn't say calculate because you have already calculated it but then maybe in an exam kind of situation you can get confused so that's why i just decided okay let's just calculate it again but then there was really no need to calculate it again and then 2.5 says calculate the distance uh, between points x and y as soon as you hear about distance I'm thinking equations of motions. That's what I'm thinking as soon as I hear about distance. So we need some distance uh, delta x, right? So this delta x, our unknown variable, uh, we have vi, uh, which is equal to 2 meters per second because it is said that it is moving at a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. And then what else do we have? Um, um, so we have delta x, we have vi. Another variable we can extract is acceleration. Uh, we can say that um, f net uh, equals to v uh, equals to ma, right? And now we know what uh, f net is. F net is uh, minus uh, sixteen uh, newtons. Uh, this year was supposed to be minus sixteen newtons uh, because f net is uh, opposing the motion so uh, we have minus 16 newtons equals to 20 kgs uh, multiplied by acceleration so our acceleration is equals to minus 116 uh, divided by 20 uh, which is giving us um, uh, minus uh, 5.8 meters per uh, per second squared, right? So now we have uh, delta x, our unknown. We have vi, uh, we have acceleration, and uh, and we know that uh, vf is equal to zero. Yeah, because at uh, y, they're saying that it stops momentarily, right? And then after that, it slides down. So which equation of motion have these four variables? Because if we can find an equation of motion that has these four variables, then we can use that equation of motion to delta mine data x. So we know that that is uh, vf squared equals to vi squared plus 2a delta x or delta y, uh, whatever uh, the axis you're dealing with. So this is zero squared which is equal to uh, 2 meters per second squared uh, plus 2 multiplied by minus 5,8 uh, delta x. So we take uh, 2 squared to the other side, we're going to get minus uh, 2 squared because 0 squared will just uh, fall off and then we're going to have uh, minus, uh, we're going to have 2 multiplied by minus 5,8 uh, delta x. Uh, make delta x the subject of the formula um, then we get minus 2 squared divided by 2 uh, multiplied by minus 5 comma 8 
uh, which is going to give us, let me put that in my calculator real quick. Um, so we have two squared divided by two multiplied by uh, minus five comma eight. And that is um, 0 0.34 uh, meters. So the distance from X to Y is 0 0.34 meters.